Today I want to show you how to deploy full stack REST API template. First and foremost, thanks to Sebastian Ramirez for it. Although the template is very well documented and relatively easy to understand, I still wanted to make this video for first timers like me or anyone who wants a quick recipe. However, I still encourage you to read the documentation of the template along with this post. This is not a fast API or a template tutorial, but it's about deploying it. I assume your application works well in your local environment and you want to deploy it on the web. This is my take on deploying it on AWS EC2. The purpose of this post is to document my process for later use and sharing with the community. If you are already familiar with fast API, you might be wondering why you need a template. While FastAPI is a great tool for building APIs, setting up a complete full stack application with authentication, database and user management, in fact, can take a lot of time and effort. That's where the template comes in and handles all that boilerplate for you. I actually find this template when I was trying to figure out how to deploy my first freelance machine learning project. Ended up building an image upload system and inference module that process images and spits out predictions. And while I'm using on AWS EC2, you can deploy this pretty much on any hosting platform because EC2 is a just a Linux machine on the cloud with no additional AWS services involved. So you can move it and another cloud provider very easily. The backend is running fast API and SQL model talking to PostgreSQL database, which is again from Sebastian Ramirez, while the front end is a clean React setup with TypeScript and Chakra UI. They're thrown in a Docker Compose for deployment, GitHub Actions for CI CD, and traffic to handle your HTTPS certificates. You may need some preparation on your host machine for deploying this template. As a starter, we need the code on the host computer. That means we need to clone it from GitHub to under code folder in your host computer. Then again, on your host computer, install Docker Engine and Docker Compose. This is not a part of this tutorial, so follow the installation steps for your Linux distribution using the link in the description. And a quick note, this tutorial is not compatible with Docker Desktop. Next, configure DNS records for your domain name. Although the exact steps may vary by domain name provider, simply add your EC2 public IP address to the record. Following the original documentation, you'll need to create three DNS records. Here is my records for my domain name. Now connect to your instance with one of the methods shown. I recommend SSH with key pair file. Once connected, switch to the root user. When you connect to your host computer on EC2, the default user is Ubuntu. But I use root user for this tutorial because I come across some permission problems regarding ports. So we are ready. Now keep the official documentation very close to you and start deploying it. First, traffic. Traffic handles several key tasks in our application like reverse proxy, load balancing, HTTPS certificates and SSL management. For its deployment, we need a Docker network, a virtual network infrastructure that allows containers to communicate with each other and with the outside world. Next, we will set up environment variables. While this setup follows the official documentation, there is an important detail to note. If you close the terminal, all environment variables will be lost and your deployment does not work after a restart or even in my case, just after closing the connection to the instance.
To make these variables persistent, you'll need to add them to your bash rc file. This file reloaded every time when you restart the instance or open a new terminal window. If you need to change them later, you'll need to modify this file instead. You can find detailed step-by-step -step instructions in my companion blog post to learn how to write them to bash rc file. You can check them by restarting your instance and calling them from the terminal. Now, switch to traffic folder. Make sure the traffic YAML file is in this folder. You can copy it from your project files to this folder. That's all. This is the only file we need for deployment of traffic. Then, deploying following the official documentation, except for the last part, which includes a build argument at the end of the line. At this point, your traffic network should be accessible. Try to log in to see if it works. Now, deployment of the actual project. But if you got database errors previously while deploying this part of the project, please check this optional part. Otherwise, you can just skip it. For a problem-free deployment on the cloud, you'll need to manage the database update history that is handled by Alembic in the full-stack FastAPI template. As you build your application, it is possible that you may have made incremental changes to your local database via Alembic, even sometimes without noticing it. Every time you change model.py based on your needs, in my case it was an inference module that writes to the database, Alembic tracks and makes changes on the database structure and save records as versions. These versions and changes doesn't propagate into development environment, but just stays only in the container and sometimes cause errors. Therefore, you may want to go to your version history at backend app Alembic versions and check if it was reflect your current database structure. In my case, I get an version error caused by the addition of columns to non-existent tables, which was working fine on the local server, but not on the remote host machine. I dealt with this problem by deleting both Alembic version history on my local environment and the database container DB. I tested it locally, if it works fine, by building the project from scratch in one go at this time. After the optional part, we are now deploying it for real. In this stage, we will write a couple of environment variables more in the bash rc file again, as I explained before for traffic. First, we'll change the environment variable from its default value of local to production. Next, we'll set the domain variable. While this is set to localhost by default, we'll want to use our own domain name when deploying. The remaining environment variables will be configured following the original documentation. Then, Ensure your application files are in the correct folder. Probably you have cloned your files from GitHub to your host machine. Verify they are located at root, code, my full stack app, etc. Navigate to this folder. Run docker compose with the build flag. Again. The important note is you must explicitly specify docker compose YAML in the command line. If you don't, docker compose override yaml will be automatically included and will prevent a proper production deployment of your application. This file is only for development environment to make it easier to use. Now you can check your application at the dashboard.yourdomain.com and it's all done. And here is the cool thing. If you set up the template following the original documentation, 
you'll automatically get updates as the templates gets better over time. That's all for today. If you have any questions or find an error on this process, please let me know. Thanks for watching.